Thank you for tuning into this presentation. My name is Nadine and I'm the Special Collections Librarian at the Newark Public Library. If you've watched some of our earlier presentations, I've already provided a brief overview of how and why an art collection was developed at the Newark Public Library. You might not know that the library has an incredible collection of hundreds of Japanese prints and illustrated books dating from the 18th century up until the very present. If you want to learn more about the collection, you've come to the right place. While it is impossible to cover most of the prints in great detail because so few of them have been digitized, I'll attempt to provide an overview of the highlights so you can get an understanding of the scope of the collection. Our holdings contain many works by artists who are relatively unknown or very little has been written about them. Here on the first slide, um, this is a book plate that was designed by John Cotton Dana, who was our second director. And it is not a representation of him. It's just a book plate he designed in the Japanese style. John Cotton Dana became the second director of the Newark Public Library in 1902. He began collecting Japanese prints as a result of personal interests. Prints in his collection were primarily produced between 1770 and 1850, and he owned many prints by Hiroshige. He obtained every book he could find on the subject, and soon he became very knowledgeable. He began then acquiring them for the library as well, because he believed that art was an important part of learning, and that prints were an accessible medium, because to him they were a democratic form of art. By purchasing art from Japan, which it was a very different kind of art from what people had seen before, it helped to make Japanese culture more accessible to Newarkers. The craftsmen who produced these prints often belonged to the lowest classes, and artwork was accessible to all, not just to the highest levels of society. These images could be produced quickly, and for example, if you were publishing a travel book, you could print off many copies of a print from a woodblock very efficiently. Most people, if they hadn't attended any of the international exhibitions, hadn't seen this new type of art. It was a new form which challenged the traditional aesthetic. The colors were vibrant and the perspective was very different. John Cotton Dana began a card catalog of Japanese signatures and he was eager to publish a book on the subject. He contacted publishers and explained how he would arrange the book. At the time, the price of the book would be very high. It would be $25. So imagine in the early 1900s, $25 for a book. I'm not sure how many people would manage to pay that. The work would have described the process the meaning of the imagery, and a history of the manners and customs. It would include a list of artists with accompanying illustrations. It was important to him that the images be reproduced in the best quality possible. Unfortunately, Dana passed away before this uh, project could be completed. In 1905, Dana curated an exhibition of prints he collected for the library between 1895 and 1905. Dana wrote a catalog in which the viewer was instructed to tour the exhibit in a certain order so that they could understand how Japanese art evolved over the centuries. In the catalog, Dana asked the viewer, why should this interest us? And his answer is, because of the simple and pure beauty of the artwork. Dana goes on to explain the peculiar character of Japanese pictorial art. He elaborates on the play with perspective, the lack of shadow, and the overall simplicity. Dana's personal collection was also exhibited during this time on the fourth floor of the library. And here are some useful definitions. Not all of these will be used in this presentation, but if you're a collector, or want to buy a print for yourself one day, these will be helpful to, to know. For example, Ehan, I'll talk about these throughout the presentation. These are illustrated books. The library doesn't have a collection of many of these. Uh, and then Ukiyo-e, 
Those are pictures of the floating world, and I'll show images uh, in the next couple of slides of those as well. One of Dana's contemporaries, the artist Peter McCord, was a cartoonist for the Newark Evening News, and he was a serious student of Japanese art. He helped Dana assemble an exhibit of Japanese objects at the Newark Public Library in 1908. McCord borrows the perspective, orientation, and cropping that Hiroshige often uses. But in his subject matter, it's a scene of Newark. It's the raised turnpike street of the Delaware Lackawanna and Western right away. And this was done in 1905. And the library has quite a collection of McCord's prints, which are all done in the same style. Japanese art influenced many European artists and even Van Gogh was a well-known collector. In the 1920s, John Cotton Dana corresponded with associates in Japan, including Mr. C.A. Ochi of Okamoto and Company. Supplemental information was provided by other contacts, including Shigeso Obata of New York, who specifically wrote descriptions of prints for the Newark Public Library. On this slide, you can see a list of tools that Mr. Aochi sent to John Cotton Dana in 1922. And even there's a note from a clerk on the bottom that Mr. Dana took the set for the library. Dana would send various requests to his contacts. For example, as in the previous slide, he requested tools. Or he would ask for the very best examples of prints, ones that were colorful and had an exciting subject matter. Here are some of the tools in our collection. We have brushes, engraving tools, and at the bottom is a baron. For those of you who might not be familiar with the process, historically, making a woodblock print involved four people, an artist, a block carver, a paper maker, and a printer. First, the artist draws an image and a block copyist reproduces the design in black and white on a thin, almost transparent sheet of paper. This is then pasted on top of a wood block, usually cherry wood was used, with rice starch. The block carvers would then use a small knife to cut out the outline of the picture. Block carvers then use chisels to carve a series of wood blocks. They create a key block, which shows the outlines of the print, and then they make one block for each color to be printed. Sometimes they use both sides of the piece of wood. Using ink made from a powdered pigment mixed with alcohol, water, and gum arabic, the printers brush the ink onto the block. Then a sheet of dampened paper is placed on top of the block and the ink is transferred by rubbing with a flat round pad called the Bauren, which is right here on the bottom. The paper is placed into different blocks in a sequence so that all the different colors could be printed. The outline would be printed first, followed by the lightest colors and then the darkest. Our files contain some of the correspondence between Dana and his associates. For instance, in this letter written in 1922 from Mr. Aochi to John Cotton Dana, we learned that our director wished to purchase dramatic scenes for the library. In turn, Aochi acquired images which reflected characteristics of Japanese life. This is an example of one of the prints that Mr. Aochi purchased for the library. An accompanying letter offers a meticulous explanation of the scene. It provides much information that Dana could then tell Newarkers and teach Newarkers about folklore and Japanese imagery. Here we see weary travelers that are passing through a town at night. There is a figure wearing the mask of a goblin head. Mr. Aochi explains that this is Tengu, who is a traditional goblin who lives in Japan in the depth of the mountains. The Tengu has a red face and a large extenuated nose, and even wings. While the symbolism of the Tengu changed over time, it was worshipped as a god. 
The Tengu was part human and part bird and was known as a trickster who could morph into other shapes. In addition to many prints that John Cotton Dana purchased for the library, the collection also grew as a result of very thoughtful donations. So in the 1920s, the library received a gift of 200 Japanese prints from William Hoffman. The library then continued to acquire prints from Dana and from other collectors. And here is an article about Hoffman's donation from a journal called The Library that Dana was responsible for and that he created and printed on the library's printing press. Over the years, there were many exhibitions of Japanese prints at the library. In 1926, Dana even brought in an artist to demonstrate how Japanese prints were made. As mentioned earlier, the library has an assortment of tools in its collection and also many woodblocks and examples of the prints that were created. For example, sheets that show how each area is inked and how the final image is formed. The Newark Public Library also has an amazing collection of Ehan. These books originated in the late 17th century and were most popular during the Edo Meiji period. These are illustrated picture books. They are printed on a piece of paper, folded, and bound with thread. They feature poems and calligraphy, and topics could include textile designs, images of flowers, uh, traveling, actors, maps, birds, and much more. I'd now like to go over some of the well-known artists who are represented in the collection, like Hiroshige. Please remember that the collection contains hundreds of loose prints as well as bound books, so what you're seeing now is a small sampling only. Imagery includes animals, people, designs, and landscapes. Hiroshige was an ukiyo-e artist who was known for his landscapes and beautiful representations of flowers and birds. He was very prolific and his work reveals the magnificence of elements in the natural world and his depictions of birds and flowers were highly admired. And here are works by Utamaro, who was known for his depictions of Japanese beauties. He was a well-known ukiyo-e artist and he produced many nature studies as well as prints of beautiful women. Although little is known about his early life, the artist created over 2,000 prints in his lifetime. Here are scenes of Tokyo and suburbs from an illustrated book by Hokusai. And next is Kunisada's 53 Stations up to Takaido. Uh, if you look on the image of the left, you can see how beautifully the artist is depicting rainfall. And here are warriors depicted in Kuniyoshi's 47 Ronin, which is another illustrated book from our collection. This is one of the Surinomos in our collection. Unlike ukiyo-e, which were produced on a larger scale, surimonos were one of a kind. They were requested by the wealthy or by poets and were issued to commemorate special occasions, such as the New Year. Typically, they contained a poem and they served to announce an important event and sometimes they were distributed to friends. Next, I'd like to transition into our contemporary prints. We continue to purchase prints, usually three per year. The reason being is that when Dana was acquiring prints over 100 years ago, they were inexpensive. Dana often purchased them for just a few cents. When Japan entered a period of modernization, the prints were seen as disposable. Sometimes they were even used as packing materials. Nowadays, however, fine contemporary prints from Japan are much more expensive and can cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars, and that is why we can only add a few to our collection on an annual basis. Many artists continue to work using traditional techniques, but many others are exploring mixed media processes, which you will see in the next few images. Here is a piece by Endo, which combines photography, lithography, and digital printing. Although it is difficult to see on the image on the slide, 
The colors and the details on this piece are extraordinary. This print is a lithograph and it contains Japanese imagery, including a piece of origami, Japanese prints on the postage stamps, and a textile. Imamura Yoshio has been incorporating gold and silver leaf into his etchings. Taika carves wood grain patterns into the woodblock or uses the back of the woodblock to capture the knots and grains of the wood. Taika is a fan of the Beatles, and this is evidenced in several of the titles of his pieces. Sugiura is known for flowers, especially irises and peonies, and interprets different varieties on paper. The artist learned gold leaf restoration at the Kyoto National Museum of Antiquities. The artist applies pieces of gold leaf to the paper, silk screens his images onto the gold, and then creates a wash over the rest of the piece. The process results in a soft, lovely textural quality. And on the right, here is an image of Poppies by Shirai, who studied oil painting and engraving. Many of her compelling works, such as Poppy, were created with minimal color and bold lines using a woodblock. So here I just wanted to take two prints from the collection which are on a similar subject matter and to demonstrate how different they can be depicted depending on the technique and the style that the artist uses. Today we try to honor John Cotton Dana's legacy by continuing to augment the Japanese print collection. In 2016, we were fortunate enough to receive a grant from the Japan Foundation, which enabled us to mount an exhibition of some of our prints, and this was titled Impressions of the Natural World. We offered programs, and the funding gave us the opportunity to produce a small accompanying catalog. Please do note that if you're looking for specific holdings, uh, most of our prints are not inventoried in our online catalog. So if you ever have any questions about which artists are in our collection, or if you had a comment or an inquiry about this presentation, or if you wanted a copy of one of the catalogs that we, we produced in 2016, please feel free to send us an email at any time at specialcollections at npl.org. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about the prints in our collection, and we hope to see you again soon at an upcoming presentation to be determined. Thank you, and visit us anytime at npl.org.